In the last set of examples, we are going to now take the series of a binomial and we're going to write it into a closed form. And if you recall, binomial theorem says that the summation of k equals 0 to n of n combination k, a to the n minus k, b to the k, is equal to a plus b to the nth power. And so that's what we're trying to do is ultimately we're trying to write a series into a closed form regardless of the value of n. So a very basic example of this, just to illustrate how it works. We have this series, k equals 0 to n, so it meets the bounds, n combination k, 5 to the n minus k, 2 to the k. In this case, it fits perfectly with the binomial theorem, so we don't have to do any algebra to it. In this case, we can say that a is 5 and b is 2. And you can clearly see that a, or 5, has the n minus k power, and that 2 has the kth power to it. So in other words, we can just now write it into the form of a plus b to the n. So that's going to be 5 plus 2 to the nth power, or that's just 7 to the n. So regardless of the value of n, k, we just, we just know that this binomial series can be written in the closed form of 7 to the nth power. This one was an extremely easy example. However, sometimes we have to do a little bit of algebra. This next example isn't too difficult. So we have k equals 0 to n, n combination k of 15 to the k power. Now, obviously, that doesn't look like it's of the form. Okay. However, one of the things that we can do is if we're ever missing any of the factors, we can always multiply by 1 to any power. In this case, I'm going to multiply by 1 to the n minus k power. And so if you're ever missing something, if you're ever missing that b to the k or the a to the n minus k, this is the trick that you do. You just multiply by 1 times or 1 raised to the n minus k power in this case. And now we can clearly see that a is going to be 1, b is going to be 15 in this example. All right, so remember, a is always the n minus k power, b is to the k power. So this just turns into very easily 1 plus 15 to the nth power, or 16 to the n. All right, so really nice and easy. Not so easy, a third example, 4 to the k minus n, minus 1 to the k, 3 to the k. This one needs a little bit of algebraic preparation, okay? It's not too difficult. So, two things we note. First of all, we have two bases with an exponent of k. And you probably remember when we did mathematical induction that if two powers or two bases have the same power, you can rewrite them as 1. So we can rewrite this as minus 1 times 3 to the kth power. So we could just multiply those bases together because they have the same exponent. Or we could just write that as minus 3 to the kth power. This 4 to the k minus n really sneaky because it looks like it's in the form we need, but unfortunately, the k and minus n are flipped. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to factor a negative 1, and that's going to be n minus k. Or another way we can write that, 4 to the minus 1 power is 1 fourth. So these are some of the tricks that we can utilize to be able to algebraically prepare a problem to be able to put into the closed form. In our problem, now we have that a is 1 fourth, and we have that b is negative 3. Right, so remember, a is to the n minus k power, and then b is to whatever the k power is. We're just going to throw that into our binomial. So that becomes 1 fourth plus negative 3 to the nth power. And that should become negative 11 fourths to the nth power as a closed form. Finally, one last example. Again, it looks like a mess. 
we have this 8 to the k minus 1 to the n minus k, 2 to the 3k minus 3n. So the good news is, is that the 8k is set up perfectly for us. So right away we know that b is going to be 8. That's pretty easy. The only thing we have to do is we just have to algebraically prepare this minus 1 to the n minus k, 2 to the 3k minus 3n. So here's how we're going to do that. Let's just rewrite that. Now minus 1 is good because that's of the form n minus k. The 2 is a little problematic. So let's factor a negative 1 but also a 3 from those two terms. So if we factor a negative 3, that's going to flip the signs around and we're going to be left with 2 to the minus 3 and minus k. We know that 2 to the minus 3 is 1 eighth, so we can now rewrite this as minus 1 to the n minus k times 1 eighth to the n minus k. Or now we can just multiply those, so it's negative 1 times 1 eighth to the n minus k, or negative 1 eighth to the n minus k. Finally, we know that a is negative 1 eighth. We know that b is 8, so we just plug those back into our binomial, and we're going to get a, negative 1 eighth, plus b, which is 8 to the eighth nth power, and that should become 63 eighths to the nth power. So if you didn't understand some of those, go back. Mainly they're just algebra tricks of factoring and multiplying to be able to write it into the form. In real life, where would you ever use this? So um, most of you that are engineers, you're probably going to have to take differential equations at some point. And a lot of times in differential equations, you start to get these series solutions that start to follow these factorial patterns. And on rare occasion, I've seen that you could go backwards and write them as combinations to simplify your answer. And on rare occasion, sometimes those solutions do contain binomial type solutions. So you could just go backwards, simplify your differential equation solution of the series very nicely using this form. It doesn't happen very often, but on occasion it does, and it's very useful to do that.